Okay, I uh, uh, been playing with pistons for a little while. I'm not an expert by any means, but uh, kind of intuitive to me. It seemed like if we reduce the size of a piston, <coughs> that it would make our rockets go faster, quicker. And so I didn't have any data to prove it, so I got busy and tried to. Sir, could you speak up just a little louder for the back here? I will do a better job of it. Thank, Thank you, you. sir. Okay. <clears throat> My mouse isn't going to work at that distance, so... What I did to, as an overview, overview, test the potential, potential benefits of reduced size pistons, I established uh, data using no piston on 10 flights. And then I used a standard 18 inch piston with the, that fit the same size as the engines on 10 flights. And then I used a reduced size piston with an adapter that were 34 inches long. And the reason I did that is to kind of have the same volume. Your 18 and your 34 reduced size had pretty much the same volume. And that was the reason I went that way. And I'll, I tried to have identical conditions. The weather wasn't always cooperative, but it, I shut down one time when it got a little breezy and waited for another launch to come around to complete it. I used uh, three major launch sites. The Flare do a launch every first Saturday of the month, and I go over there and participate with them. I also have a launch site there at Cotton City where I live, and also up at Marincy, Arizona, where I work. And so elevation was similar at those places. And the reason for the project, you fill a small tube, you'll fill it quicker. And if you want the same volume, it needs to be longer. If it's going to be smaller diameter. And you can demonstrate that by blowing a plug through a straw. Uh, a small straw, you don't take as much air to move that uh, plug quicker through the straw. And that's what I was wanting to prove with this project. Okay, I've prepared two rockets near the same size, identical features. The reason I picked two is because if one of them got lost or severely damaged, I'd have another one to work with. But it turned out both of them survived all through the testing. I used uh, one for five flights on each of the three different types of tests. And uh, they all had altimeters in them. I was wanting, I figured the faster they went, the higher they would go, because they all had a three second delay. There was slight damage on a couple of flights. I repaired them, but I figured since I was going from uh, no piston to standard piston to reduced size piston, any damage would have hurt the altitude of anything. But it turns out my data was correct. Uh, let me give you a, an idea of how I prepared these small, smaller diameter pistons. I took a 34 inch BT-5, I put two centering rings approximately an inch apart, outside to outside, at the top, and then I put a piece of BT-20 over that with a short section above it to act as a coupler. And then I put a stop in the bottom so they were floating head pistons. And uh, I recorded the data for these two uh, rockets. And during the test, two times they come up with readings that were way off the chart. Just I was absolutely sure they didn't come. So that's the flaw of the guy either loading the altimeters or the altimeters themselves. 
So I discarded those, those two points and flew them twice more to replace that data. And this is the data I received from the flights. A is the one rocket, B is the second rocket, and I flew them both for five each. You notice that there's quite a fluctuation in range without a piston. With a piston, they increased a little bit, and with the reduced size piston, they increased even more. And, and uh, this is a graph that shows the data, the blue without. I'm not sure what color the middle one, orange or something, it's with the <laughs> standard piston, and the greenish gray maybe. I'm colorblinded, so I you have trouble it. with it. Orange and gray. You got it right. Oh, good. And it shows that they're much higher. And then the interesting is the average, non-distant average, 117.858. Regular piston, 132.86, and the reduced Diameter 151. So my conclusion of all this is that the smaller piston does get the rocket going faster using about the same amount of exhaust. Any questions? Of doing a reduced diameter piston? I didn't notice any compared to the standard size. And what is the, is there a practical limit? What if you reduced it that's even one more? Of the, that's one of the things I'd like to explore further. It's would even smaller be better. But it, it might affect the performance of the motor because it increased the pressure. Yeah. And I would love to work with Chris, his instruments compare to what I do. That would be fantastic. Now, um, I want to make sure I, read it. I, I heard you right. The uh, the 18 millimeter pistons, the standard diameter pistons, were shorter than the reduced diameter pistons so that you could correct their volume? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, because we've seen a lot of other reports on pistons that sort of indicate that longer pistons have been more effective than shorter pistons. Did you think of, of Controlling, controlling for the length of the piston, trying some reduced diameter but shorter pistons to see if maybe it wasn't, if the difference in length maybe length. wasn't, if the, I guess what I'm saying is there a possibility that the difference in length was, 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 was screwing with your data? That crossed my mind, mm -hmm. but it uh, was not what I was trying to show, so, but it is a point to explore further. Thanks. How do you, fit your uh, engines to the pistons and did you have any that uh, pr prematurely separated? I do not know. It may have been that the lower altitudes were separating quicker than they should have. Uh, how, how is it you fit? Do you just wrap tape friction fit? You don't use uh, <coughs> clamps or anything to hold them? Or? I do not use clamps. I, they are friction fit, but I try to make sure that they were all good and tight a good fit and they kind of a taper on the motor by different layers of tape so that uh, they're not full friction all the way off that, that's a method I've used for a long time okay questions from the audience uh, most of the other reports we've seen seem to indicate, as he said, that length is the factor, not volume. So a good control would be to do a 34-inch length that isn't reduced volume to see if it gets the same performance to determine whether it's the increased pressure giving you more altitude or if it's the increased length giving you more altitude. Yes, that is a point to explore. Any others? Based on the results of this, did you use the reduced diameter piston in the competition as a sweep? Yes, I did. <coughs> and how did you do it? Uh, the first two altitude events, I didn't excel. 
but today I did get a second place, I believe. Okay. Cool. Cool. <laughs> Any other questions? I didn't do the math. What is the percentage increase? Uh, the eight percent. <clears throat> Non-piston to reduce size piston, the increase was close to about 45 percent. And so one thing you could do also is, what I told some of the people yesterday, is try to do a, an, a standard deviation so you can see how significant the difference is between them. Not just do a mean, but do a standard deviation to see if they are you have really close results to being able to tell them apart on the average. Okay, any more? All right, thank you very much.